Hi guys, how are you? Hi, it's Dr. Liz and I just wanted to say hello on this lovely Thursday and I'm so glad you are joining me because um, we're going to have some fun, right? We are going to have some fun and today's topic is just about that. It is about understanding what shifts in behaviors and expectations do in declining standards. Hmm. Basically what that means is have you ever felt like you're the short order cook, the maid, the chauffeur, the lover on the spot, um, that just by simply saying yes or I do to the relationship, it's assumed that you've got it all covered. It's your job, your duties, your chores. Maybe you're feeling a little bit like me that at times feel like take it for granted or unappreciated and it leaves me maybe you feeling resentful and almost overlooked in the relationship okay. and maybe there's not even uh, apparent gratitude on their spot maybe there's nothing where they just say hey yeah this is awesome you rock I don't know what I would do without you okay maybe How about a simple thank you? Do, you? do you get that? All right. Well, this is what happens in, in relationships. And I want to share with you three simple things that we can do to shift that relationship satisfaction. Because you know what? Honestly, nothing is more costly than living a dissatisfied and disconnected life and relationship. So I'm here to help you do that. Um, so in our relationships, Oftentimes, when we say yes, or we say I do, then in a blink of an eye, and it's really kind of crazy, but our manners and our niceties, those pleases and thank yous, drop away and they fade into the dust. This is typical, um, or it can, is to possibly be expected in longer term relationships or marriages, but I've seen it even in the ones that go from dating into being exclusive into being engaged we sort of just say hey we're a couple now mm -hmm. okay. so what is it about us humans how do our standards how do their standards slide so doggone quickly what is it okay in the transition from me to we we shift a lot in our, in our expectations of ourselves and our sweethearts we shift in our manners our respect our appreciation for the other um, and we lose awareness. There is this kind of like sort of fading out. You don't know, there's so many times, maybe um, maybe it's happened to you, it's happened to me, where my husband would go and have his hair cut or his shave. You know, I'd ask him to get rid of this thing or get rid of this thing and he got rid of it and I don't even notice. Okay, didn't notice, it's true. Um, and so in the daily routine of living together and going through the routine thing, taking trash out, ordering groceries, cleaning up. Um, you know, those, those niceties drop away. Um, and they start and we start forgetting the simple gestures of busting our glass glasses, offering them a beverage, um, making them a sandwich while we're in the kitchen. The courtesies of Hey, do you mind if we watch something else before before they plunk themselves down the TV, you know, the couch, and grab the channel changer and change it? Like, hey, you know it's sports season, or hey, you know it's I don't know, bachelor show, whatever it might be. Before they change the TV or the radio station, and so taking our preferences into consideration, um, taking our schedules or energy level levels into consideration starts to slide. It starts to drop away, fade. Guess what? We are left feeling resentful, okay? Maybe, maybe you aren't, but um, in my world, feeling resentful, burdened, wondering how we got gypped, you know? Why am I always having to do this? Why am I getting the short end of the stick? Or it feels like this is the short end of the stick. What is occurring here? <laughs> um, and seriously, seriously, ladies, it's just us here today. Have you ever felt taken for granted? Um, have you ever felt like these little thoughts in your mind that it's your job when in the past there was more politeness, more courtesy? Um, <laughs> my, 
that even the dog was asked if the dog wanted to go outside. Okay. The dog was asked what they would prefer. You want to go outside? You want to stay inside? You want to stay? Think, oh my God. Okay. Yet you're feeling like you're being ordered around or overlooked on your needs or your preferences. Like, would you like to go for a walk, please? Would you like to, you know, watch something different on television? <laughs> All right. So I'm here today. I'm going to share three areas that easily, easily slide in relationships, and there's a fix for them. All right. Ready? Drum roll. Mind your manners. That's number one. It's so simple. It is so simple, and yet it's so overlooked in the lifespan of a relationship or marriage. The pleases, the thank yous, the you're welcome, do you mind, excuse me, those are gone. They're gone within the privacy of our home. They're gone within sometimes the interactions with us, but the manners are still there. They are just saved out for the public, the co-workers, the random strangers in the line, but they seem to be forgotten or overlooked as or considered unnecessary at home. And they leave folks um, feeling that they're kind of like on demand. There's not a courtesy. They're so oftentimes really overwhelmed, steamy, resentful, and nasty, dark secret thoughts start to swirl. They do, they do. Um, and maybe you've had some of these, you know, have you had those snarky thoughts? They could be like, Psh! To your head but there's an inner conversation in that or be about being ordered around you might have inner arguments with yourself right? like well after all they did this or they didn't do this but you're, you're kind of having this inner dialogue with yourself and finding out or trying to rationalize why it's okay or make it okay or, or maybe you're sometimes mentally counting how much life insurance they have. Let's see, here's this policy, and here's that policy, and that one for that much, and after, after burial fees. And so you might be asking, what life might be like um, with that financial padding and a life without them around? It happens. We have those thoughts. We're human. They're human. It's normal. Okay? Part of the mind your manners also includes keeping them in the loop. They need, you know, it's times, places, plans, delays, you know, as we, we both need to keep each other in the loop. And often as we live with each other, we shift or they shift in the connections, especially the everyday updates of what's going on and their plans. Um, and right now, with the sort of living underfoot with each other, this time period is especially hard on each other um, and especially strained with this sort of upside down kind of world that we, we've got going. Um, sometimes people assume, well, geez, you know, you know where I'm going. I'm going right next to the other room. Um, yeah, well, maybe I don't know that your meeting's been, been changed and you now have the whole afternoon off. But your friends do, or social media might know, um, because we or they tend to update their friends and social media posts sometimes more than us. And so, Definitely sometimes feel uh, irritated or suspicious being out of the loop um, or overwhelmed when you had planned that they would take the kids to, um, I don't know, let's say the karate lesson or the, the, the soccer lesson, that that would give you the afternoon off um, or there, that they had planned to pick up curbside and then suddenly they had other plans and had forgotten even all about curbside. So oftentimes you start wondering, what's wrong? <laughs> Why are we even mar married? I'm the one running the house. Um, you know, maybe in those moments too, when you're kind of wondering, you even start wandering around on Facebook, just randomly looking up old high school or college friends, drifting back mentally we're trying to drift back to time when you felt that you were a pri priority. And there were fun times and there was connected times and there was polite times. Honestly, guys, when we get, when we're out of the loop, when there's gaps in the relationship, even something so simple as just how their day went or what's going on with the day, we turn to others, okay? We turn to others such as trolling and scrolling the Facebook and looking up you know, old 
high school college friends or kind of stalking and looking at other happy couples or we start to wonder if they've stepped out on us you know what are they doing with their free time if they're not connected with me or we're not connected what are they doing and so it's really really important to go back to number one shift of minding our manners number two is self-care well, I'm guilty of this one, okay? But once the dating's done, self-care often fades with priorities, you know, and they're legitimate priorities. I get it. We, we have student loans, car payments, mortgages, kids, critters, you know, and I get it. Life's expensive. And yet when we were dating, courting, even the early years of our relationships, I think most of us would agree that we, plus them, put more effort into this area. Think about it. Didn't you spend, I know I did, more time kind of looking at maybe my hair or change my shirt or something, right? What I see um, is that we get and they get, we get comfortable with the routine of seeing the same person day after day after day, okay? We get comfortable with that. Just like me missing the fact that maybe Mike changed up his beard for me, right? And in the hum of the regular routine, there's a loss of the extra effort. Whether it's weight gain or the same old PJs, it's a turnoff and it dulls the senses and attraction. You know, and add in the basics, like not regular bathing or teeth brushing, and I can tell you the wild factor drops significantly, right? And it's true. There's many, many times I hear the couples, you know, when they come in their deep, deeper stuff, is their spouses have not even brushing their teeth on a regular basis or bathing on a regular basis. Yet they're walking around signaling us like a stallion, you know, I'm sexy, come and get me. And all we can think of, all they can think of, is he smells. Or when was that thing washed? You know. I'm not feeling it when you're still in your old running shorts or sweatpants and an unwashed body. So get on us, look in the mirror. I'll start talking about this. But we gotta practice some self-care. They need to. And the third shift is managing our emotions, all right? What do I mean by that, managing my emotions? I mean that when we're out in public, most often, maybe this, we're not flipping somebody off or throwing things, you know. I'm not going into Home Depot going, where's the garden hoses? All I can find is sprinkler heads. I'm not throwing those things, okay? That's probably not our first go to. I might be feeling it in my head. Where is it? Where do they keep these things? They just want to throw something out, but we're not doing it. And the same thing as I'm guessing at work. We're probably not cussing out co-workers or customers. We're not stomping around the pout, whether we're literally in the job at work these days or virtually um, in, in um, work these days. We're probably not blacking out our Zoom or um, sending nasty grams to our, I, our work I am, okay? Even though we might be feeling frustrated, even though we might be having, you know, be struggling at work, we're probably not doing that um, to outright to our customers or our coworkers. Okay. So even overwhelmed and, um, you know, what is it? How are we able when we're out and about in these public moments, how do we keep it together in the public? Yet, really me this, what happens? Why do we lose it when we're in private? What gives us the right? What gives them the right? seriously, to take pride in the fact that they can lose their temper because I run hot. Um, it's part of my DNA, you know, that's just part of my nationality. Or I have a right to speak my piece, I can speak my piece any way I want, and they have got to listen to it. But guess what? No, they don't. We don't have the right to, to bully or name call or raise our tone, or shout, or hit, or throw things, or anything, just because we're having a moment, just because we're in that relationship or the marriage. 
Sorry. Not going to get that here. So keeping our standards high means just that. Whether it's a private moment or a public moment, I'm saying keep it together. Cool it down, collect yourself, express ourselves, be classy. How they? I want them to be classy. I want you to be classy. I want me to be classy with the high standards and respect for ourselves and our sweethearts. We expect we express ourselves appropriately, not abusing or badgering, just because we can, because we're a we, not a me, um, because we're in committed, loving relationships, and they kind of have to listen to us. Mm -mm. Now, okay. but before I go on that, let me just give you this kind of example of how keeping your hot standards high, making that person be a VIP in your daily life is a real quick fix and a great relationship sustainer, a great relationship enhancer. So Megan and Mark had come to me um, about a post affair discovery. You know, Mark, he was in sales with a huge traveling um, geographical, I want to say, uh, territory. And so in that time period, he had stepped out on his wife, Megan, with a former co-worker friend. It was a brief, um, unsatisfying, devastating affair uh, that the couple had to overcome. But they came to me and we used my Affair Proof Marriage Program, worked through all the necessary steps. They healed and they came closer. So both had done their part to, to repair and move forward. It was great. And yet, things started happening. Megan continued to be triggered. There was anxi anxiety and suspicion so seemingly out of nowhere. So we came back in and we started talking. And we found out that Mark had dropped the ball. Actually, he had been dropping the ball from the beginning and that Megan had been able to cope or overcome it. But now, post-affair, it was triggering and she knew she deserved better. Um, they had raised the standards higher in their relationship and she was being triggered with this gap. Want to guess what the trigger was? Want to guess what the gap was? Okay. Okay. Mark was missing number one, the mind your manners. Okay? And in fact, this is something that he had done from all through the dating, all through his career climb, all through the marriage. In fact, he messed up on letting his wife know if he was running late. He made her maid, um, her and the kids wait and wonder when he'd be home for dinner, bath, story time, right? He just didn't bother to tell them. And so, you know, they went on about life or they waited and dinner got cold, whatever. But now um, it was making a problem. So all it took was one simple question for Mark. He's a smart guy. He got it. He worked with him. And there's, you know, and this is what I asked him, right? And so you can use questions like this as well to, to figure things out with your spouse or your sweetie. So I asked him, if you're, Mark, if you're running late to a client meeting, um, do you keep your client wondering and waiting or do you call, email, or text them and tell them you're running late and when they can expect you to arrive? And his response immediately, well, geez, of course I contact them when I know. That would not be professional to keep them waiting. His voice trailed off. He had the aha moment. I love aha's, don't you? Like, yeah. And he said, oh, he just turned around. Megan, I am so sorry. I keep you waiting and you're wonder and wondering. I can see why not only is it irritating, it's disrespectful, but it's also, that's when I used to kind of use my territory and my inconsistent schedule to conceal stuff with the affair partner. So, he made his apologies. You're my VIP. It's not right. I never thought about letting you know. I just thought you're supposed to know and wait that I trust that eventually I'll be home and it's supposed to be okay. So he got it. It was a big fix, a big win, and they moved on. So it's yay. Smart Mark, thank you. And great Megan for saying, this isn't working for me. I don't know what's going on, but this isn't working for me. So we've covered three simple ways that you can make subtle shifts in your manners. They're subtle, right? Brushing your teeth, not that bad, right? Say, oh, excuse me, not that bad, okay? Um, subtle, so three simple ways you make the subtle shifts in your manners that can deliver a big, big impact in your relationship. 
And what I want to share is that this is only one piece of the bigger picture in how to truly shift your relationship into one that you feel great about. Not just so-so, but really, really great about. You think of brushing your teeth could be so simple and playing please and thank yous and other things. I've got so much more to share with you. So what would having an actionable suite of all the tools you need to save your relationship feel like to you? What if you had all 35 years of me packed right into a place where you could easily access it? You have a specific solution to your exact problem. Well, I've got it. It's a self-study resource with lifetime access so you can always have the right tool at your fingertips the moment you need it. Sort of like Google. <laughs> <laughs> How do I like with Google Circle, okay? Um, and it's, you don't need to Google misinformation, right? It's accurate information. It's going to help. And so if it sounds interesting to you, I'd love to invite you to check out my signature program, the Happy Marriage Masterclass, okay? And this is for you. If you feel like you've lost who you are and you lost the parts of the relationship that you used to feel loved and connected um, and that you're feeling like you not able to have the, the sizzle and the ease that you had before. Well, you're going to learn exactly how to get that sex life you desire. Get it back. And better? Probably better. But return to a more deeply loving place where communication is comfortable. Not conflict, but communication is comfortable. So you can have a rock solid relationship again. It's possible, and I can show you how. <laughs> My Happy Marriage Masterclass, Happy Marriage Relationship, um, is 10 modules. It's self-study, self-paced, no pressure here, folks, don't worry. It's 24 hours, seven days a week, lifetime access. You start on the topic that you want. Remember, I put specific solutions in there. It'll match up to your exact problems, your exact needs, okay? So you will learn how to easily move through the materials, start on the topic you want, stick there, go through there, come back if you want. There's videos from me, there's activities, there's printables, downloads, um, that you can work through the course. They're fun activities, there's no, no, no hard lifting here. And the other thing is that I'm here, right inside Relationships Renewed, for weekly live trainings, um, with also this Q&A, Drop your Q&A in the group. DM me for a more private, specific thing. And maybe if you'd like more, um, I also have one-on-ones with Dr. Liz and Boxer, which lets you have access to me on a daily basis or a weekly basis. So I'm gonna drop the link in the comments below. And please be sure to use the coupon code for your VIP discount because you are my VIPs. I care very much about you and your relationships. So I wanna again, thank you for joining me. Um, remember, keep your standards high. You did before, don't let them slide now. Check out the Happy Marriage, Happy Relationship Masterclass. It's got your suite of tools that's gonna save and enhance your relationship and yourself, honestly. There's, to me, nothing can be more, it's more sad and disappointing than leaving, living a dissatisfied life. It's costly. It's costly to yourself and your relationship, your kids. When you sell yourself short and you compromise, that's even more costly and devastating than divorce, right? So take the time, make yourself and your relationship a priority. Um, get, get on the VIP track by using the tools offered inside my showcase course, all right? All right, any questions, drop them in, in the comments below. Feel free to DM me. Um, again, take time today, make yourself, make your relationship a priority. Check out my Happy Marriage Masterclass. Use the discount coupons because you are my VIPs. Right? Take care. Bye-bye.